you just get caught mid sip? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to History of a Haunting. <laughs> uh, she is Laura. And she's Carrie. Mid-sip. Hi. Mid sip. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's what they called me in high school. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, they called you a lot of things in high school. <laughs> Mom, I'm kidding. Don't listen to this episode. Um, which, uh, by the way, my mom and I listened to Great Amherst Mystery yesterday when we were out shopping. She loved it. Mm-hmm. She loved it. <laughs> yeah. She That's was awesome. like you and was like, this bitch has the worst luck ever. I'm like, just keep listening. Right. It's, it doesn't get better. It doesn't it's get really any good. better. Yeah. It doesn't get any better. And uh, she also chuckled quite heartily at um, you mentioning, we were talking about Little House on the Prairie and you said something about John Boy. And right when I said, That's the Waltons, she said, That's the Waltons. I'm like, Yeah, I tell her, don't worry. It was funny. That's she funny. loved it. Yeah, she thought it was a really great episode. So it's easy to confuse them. I mean, I mean, it is. Little. There, it was so many shows about country bumpkins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true. We had Green Acres. Mm. What else did we have? So many Beverly Hillbillies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All the good old naked night shows. Oh God! Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, to that end, that I don't have any EVPs. We just recorded Friday, so nothing really new has happened since then. <laughs> now it's Sunday. No. Yeah. Exactly. I yeah. did go to the Doobie Brothers. It was How awesome. was that? Yeah, yeah. It was great. They played for like two hours straight. It was really fun. They played cool. like all the hits at the end, which was great. It was lots of fun. That's cool. Nice day to go sit outside and just listen to yeah. some. Rock yeah, and, and with the weather being better, like I'm sure it was probably just really, really nice. It was. I mean, it yeah. was just like an enjoyable, mellow Saturday. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Nice. You know me. I I buy these concert tickets and I'm like, hmm, but do I really want to deal with people? <laughs> like, is it worth it? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the artist has to be really there. good to deal with people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. So you went to the concert after you um got a good deal of packing done. Absolutely. I got mm. so little, no, none packing done. <laughs> but I did get some errands run. Buy more stuff for the house? Actually, I bought your Christmas present. Oh, hey, stop it. I have ordered mm. yours. It's being made. Oh, so it's yours. I mean, that's oh, stop it. it. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give it to you when you come in um, December. Yay. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Um, Funny. Uh-huh. That's, re- that's really funny. So it was worth me missing some packing. Okay, it was. But I don't want you to throw the Christmas present in my face when it's the day before moving and you have nothing packed yet. I will. I'm going to get, I'll get stuff done. Okay. I thrive under pressure. Okay. I'm just a um, procrastinator. <laughs> me too. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, then let's just get right into it. We have a double recording today, guys. Um, we are going to do this episode and then we're going to take a little break because it's, we're recording our Halloween episode after this. We got to get into costume and Laura has to finish writing her script. So whatever. I said procrastinator. I know I own it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, just don't forget to email me your sources so I can put them up on the thing. (laughs) I will. Okay. Um, so Laura, go ahead and take it away. Let's tell them where we're going. The Wong Siwu in Indonesia. Woohoo! Woohoo! We really need to do more international locations, I think. I agree. There's so much out there and um, mm-hmm. so many different interesting places with the stories that go along with them that are just crazy. Yeah. Some good stuff. For sure. So, yep, my sources for today's episode um, is wikipedia.org, insideindonesia.org, and indonesia.travel backslash i don't know lots of stuff and then (laughs) which is why i just put backslash us i was like that's not all gonna fit on this tiny little strip there you go which by the way i have to say a couple episodes ago you got your sources from wikipedia.org and i was like does she know she said dot org not dot com but then i was actually like oh there actually is a wikipedia.org and mm-hmm. a dot com. I didn't know that. Right. So now, listeners, you do know it as well. 
Right. Yeah. We're t- we're, we're, it's a teachable moment, man. We're here to drop the knowledge, guys. We're just dropping knowledge. Um. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Let's. What? Talk to me about this place because its history is nine kinds of fucked. It is really. So, uh, Luang Siwu uh, literally means a thousand doors. Um, it's a landmark in Semarang, Central Java, Indonesia. And it was built as the headquarters of the Dutch East Indies Railway Company. Mm. Uh, the name comes from its design with numerous doors and arcs. The building has about 600 large windows. Uh, the complex itself consists of several buildings, two main ones named A and B. They're very cleverly named i was gonna um, say stop it that's far too hard to remember <laughs> it is and then the two smaller ones are named c and d so don't get confused the L- <laughs> the l-shaped a building faces the tuga muda roundabout again i'm gonna do the best i can with these somewhat difficult words pronunciations or names yeah. yes yeah not so great on me i'm trying <laughs> there are two identical towers on a building, which were originally used to store water, each with a capacity of 7,000 liters, which is 1,800 U.S. gallons for okay. our U.S. listeners who don't know metric, the, which is all of us. The right. building <laughs> features large stained glass windows and a grand staircase in the center. There was also once a tunnel connecting a building to several other sites in the city, including the governor's mansion and the harbor. Hmm. Now, the B building is located behind the A building. It is three stories in height, with the first two floors consisting of offices and the third holding a ballroom. The building with high, large windows also has a basement floor that is kept partially flooded to serve to cool the building through evaporation. Oh, neat. Okay. So I have a question. Why does a railway company need a ballroom? Well, Or was it just something that was sort of like... Yeah, we were talking about Colonial. I'm sure that they had parties there and, you know. Um, fancy. Events and stuff like that. Wow. Uh, it's nazi. Like it. Right? Pretty fun. Yeah. My work does not have a ballroom. <laughs> yeah. I need to work on that. <laughs> Sorry. We'll get right on that. We're going to put that in the right. fiscal budget for next year. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. So the first construction began in 1904 with a building, which was completed in 1907. The rest of the complex was finished in 1919. Um, it was initially used by the Nederlandish Indisch Spoorweg Matschapij, which was the first railway company in the Dutch East Indies. What was that again? <laughs> no, I'm not repeating that. <laughs> oh, okay. Massacre that I just did. I was like, is she... It's something Dutch. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, go on. <laughs> Whatever. You're not sorry. The building is situated in the Kota Lama area of Semarang, which is home to th- one of the best collections of 19th and early 20th century colonial buildings in Southeast Asia. But sadly, like Jakarta's Kota Tua, this neighborhood is in, desperate, in a desperate state of neglect and decay. But Luang Siwu, just a kilometer down the road from this musty neighborhood, stands in freshly painted contrast. You know, so they've I, actually taken care of this one. Yeah, this one almost looks brand new. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. they've... Uh, they've worked on it yeah so the long Siwu's golden age as a symbol of empire was not to last um its trouble started with the second world war as japan's asian blitzkrieg blitzkrieg well, i can't say that word today quickly blitzkrieg. Started aside centuries <laughs> yes thank you blitzkrieg. Sure. i'm like ah, I, I tried too many other words i'm like this one's not gonna work now <laughs> <laughs> i'm out of languages I'm words are hard <laughs> in all the, the languages not, the german's not coming <laughs> Quickly swept aside centuries of colonial rule in Southeast Asia, the new conquerors quickly appropriated some of the best real estate for themselves. Sure. In Semarang, the Japanese took over Luang Siwu with the Kempete, using the massive basement of Building B as a detention center. Ugh. As rumors circulated of brutal torture and summary executions, locals came to view the building with dread. One story held that the severed heads of former prisoners were thrown into a corner of the basement. When the Japanese war machine collapsed in 1945, Indonesian nationalists claimed the city and the Dutch launched an attack on Semarang. On October 14, 1945, shortly after Indonesia declared her independence, the building became the scene for the bloody Battle of Semarang. The five-day battle took place between AMKA, which they were called the Railway Youth Force um, in English, against the Kempete and the Kudu 
Ute, the Japanese military police and strike force. Many were tortured and executed during this battle. And as a side note, when the Dutch came back in, the Dutch, those tunnels I talked about, yeah, the Dutch knew of them. So what they did is they used um, the tunnels that that linked that Loeng Siwu to the other strategic sites in the city. So the troops penetrated the city's defenses and came to the surface oh, to attack key sites um, using those tunnels. Yeah. And then uh, they fought for five days um, in the city, all over the city, to regain control. It reminds me of Dover Castle, where underneath it is a tunnel system mm-hmm. that... Is it the French, I think, tried to get in and breach Dover Castle through those as well, but they weren't able to. But it sounds like they were in this case. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I wonder how many old historical buildings like were built for that purpose and like ton- had tunnels that were built for that purpose. Right. I think it was, you know, to make so that the employees and stuff could get to, you know, strategic places they needed to go without dealing the rest with the rest of the city. It's kind of interesting. That is kind of interesting. Hmm, okay. Yeah. So today, a somber moment stands to honor the fallen and to educate visitors about the role of Indonesia's nationalist youth who resisted both the Dutch and Japanese occupations. Yet few of the domestic tourists, um, mostly youths themselves, um, stop to read the plaque on the small squat structure near the exit of the tour. What many do remember about the war is that people, mostly Dutch colonials, were tortured and died violent deaths in Luang Siwu. In the early years of the Republic, the newly nationalized Indonesian Railway took over Luang Siwu. However, as it began to age and the government failed to reinvest sufficient funds for maintenance, and as newer office complex were built in the 1970s, the building fell into disrepair. In recent decades, it was clearly falling apart and headed towards ruin. By 2009, the Luang Siwu complex was in a state of considerable, considerable dilapidation. Simon Marcus Goer, writing in the Jakarta Post, noted it as being dark and evidently sick. Its white walls are faded throughout, blackened by pollution and neglect. Rendered walls are cracked, and any wallpaper has long since fallen away to reveal the red bricks beneath. Mold and weeds grow over much of the building, and mice and rats are the chief residents. Yuck. Done. Goodbye. Not going. (laughs) We were going to go, but not anymore. (laughs) But the building soon um, underwent renovations to ensure that it would be profitable as a tourist attraction. The governor of central Java, Bibit Waluo, mobilized it, several just dozen say soldiers to assist with the renovations. The soldiers focused on external repairs. Local residents were disappointed in the renovations, um, opining that it had lost its authenticity. However, on July 5th of 2011, the newly renovated complex was inaugurated by First Lady Ani, Ani Yurohano. Sure. However, at the time, only B building was available for tours. Um, it is hoped to be a main attraction in the central Javan government's tourist program uh, beginning in 2013. And Luang Su is now open for tours and does actually contain a railway museum as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's very so, cool. And it does get a lot of visitors now. Um, Yes. I think I read somewhere it was like up to a thousand a day or something. A day, quite, yeah. Quite a lot, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um that was really great. I had no idea I had no idea about this place until I was just kind of going through I don't know, some article about haunted places and I was like, Well, wait a minute, what is this? Because you know, like I said, we're trying to, you know, do more international locations and so I thought that mm-hmm. this is re- gonna be really cool. So yeah, this place sounds super interesting. And I mean, the Japanese were, I mean, as well as every almost everybody in the World War II, I mean, the war crimes and the torture and stuff of captured people was yeah. is very well documented. And so, you know, the yeah. colonialists did not uh, fare well mm-hmm. under occupation. Yeah. So some of those stories are pretty, pretty intense. They are, yeah. I touch on them mm-hmm. a little bit. In, in my yeah. part, as, you know, usual. Um, as we do. Yes, as we do. Uh, yeah. Great job. I love it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this is going to be a quick episode. There wasn't a whole lot um, on either side, really. Um, so, yeah, it'll be a quick episode. But let's get into mm-hmm. the hauntings of mm-hmm. Li Wong Siwu. Um, I got... Whoops. Hang on. Huh. Hold on. Wait. I don't... Something. 
the tech producers sleep it. At, sleeping on the job. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so my sources are thesocians.com, insideindonesia.org, like you, and littlehouseofhorrors.com. So right away, it's already set up to be really great. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so let's see here. The Japanese people, um, as you had, you know, alluded to and is, you know, is pretty well documented, like you said, would torture and hang people from the iron beams under the ceiling. Uh, so it is said that this place is frequented by many ghosts, of, many of them who are grief ridden, obviously, um, mm-hmm. and are said to haunt anyone who stands underneath these beams. So what's interesting is that guides will often tell the tourists to stick together because they're fearful of one of them wandering too far off or falling into a trap laid down by the very same ghosts. Um, Interesting. Yeah, you know, some of these locations um, are just downright terrifying with some of the the claims of paranormal activity that mm-hmm. that they have. Um, the um, diplomat diplomat hotel in the philippines was Mm -hmm. really was one of these as well um but what's actually even scarier is that the guides will offer tourists a ritual um by which they can see ghosts and um they either will place graveyard dirt over their eyes or dirt in that's in the building there in the building over Mm -hmm. their eyes and recite something and then once they open their eyes they will be able to see the ghosts um the only thing with this is that there is no way to reverse the ritual so many of the tourists have often reported being creeped out by this offer that's made because Mm -hmm. um, i mean who wouldn't who would want to live in constant horror of seeing dead people all the time especially if there's no way to undo it turn it off right right exactly um the other thing is I had read, and I think I mentioned it a little bit further down in my part, but like, okay, graveyard dirt. I don't want it dirt of any kind rubbed on my right. eyes. But like, especially in this building, like, like you said, there's mold and there's rats and there's rodents and there's... Oh, thanks. I don't yeah. really think that kind of... There was. I think they cleaned a lot of it up. I don't know if all the buildings are quite... Um, up to tourist type standards. Code. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can call it code. <laughs> Habitable, kind of somewhere you'd like to wander. Right, exactly. Go to all kinds of places most people wouldn't want to wander anyway. <laughs> well, that's true. Um, many of the locals refuse to enter this building in fear of having a ghost become attached to them and follow them home. They warn all those who wish to visit the building, but this has never deterred the visitors. Um, mm-hmm. Visitors are made to wear rubber boots since the basement, like you said, is filled with water. Um, mm-hmm. The basins were used as a detention center by the Japanese to capture and torture people um, where they would execute them by beheading them in the basement and letting their blood flow down the drains. And then hucking their head in the corner. Mm -hmm. Um, All visitors that have gone have reported hearing pained cries and anguished screams coming from the basement. All of them were left shaken by these incidents that they have experienced. Um, Which I think, when I read that, I was like, that's a bold claim that all the visitors experience this and all of them yeah so i was like that's a bold bold claim but i mean maybe it's true i don't know um i've never been to indonesia if i go i'll let you i'll report back Uh, (laughs) so the basement also contains a small door which led to a small concrete floor here the japanese would bind six prisoners together and then fill the room with water, leaving the prisoners to drown. Any survivors would then have their heads cut off. What is with the head cutting off? What the decapitation here is insane. I do not know. Yeah. So um, the Japanese were quite brutal with their prisoners, as a result of which many of their victims continue to linger around the building searching for their peace. Um, The basement also apparently has a row of alcoves, which were used as a standing prison. 12 prisoners would be forced to stand in the small cramped area. Many of them had reportedly turned mad as a result of being trapped in a small enclosure. 
So it's pretty unimaginable how a human mind could come up with such inhuman punishments. Um, it's mm-hmm. obviously for these reasons and the things that happened there. It's not shocking that many ghosts still loiter around seeking revenge for their honestly twisted murders. Mm-hmm. Um All of the deaths and murders that have been witnessed by this building continue to send chills down everyone's spines, and all of them have been spooked by the horrific and tragic treatment of the soldiers that were there during the war. So, um, like you had said, decades of neglect... Blitzkrieg. (laughs) I haven't even gotten to the Indonesian words yet. (laughs) Yeah, that's fun. It's fun. Torturing. Sure, sure. Hard to say words. Hard to say words, yeah. Um, decades of neglect uh, are were evident in the um, deep stains and missing roof tiles. The floors of the two rooms bore the markings of long-abandoned badminton courts. And the sky can be seen through several spots in the attic roof. So, I don't know if this is some of the other buildings that are mm-hmm. on the property. Because um, it sounds like the ones that they've opened for tourism are okay now like you know right. up to code uh <laughs> so the indonesian government feared the tourists were afraid to enter liwang lawang siwu jesus here we go lawang siwu because of the ghosts but like you said the numbers say otherwise about a thousand visitors visit it each day ghost stories might actually even attract people instead of scaring them off which Hi, that'd be me. Right. Um, the ghost of a Dutch woman is often seen. She is said to have taken her 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 whole life, <laughs> as opposed to just part of her life, uh, <laughs> her <laughs> own life at Luang Siwu. Uh, obviously, the basement is a very creepy place. People feel uneasy, and there are claims of headless ghouls that are unable to find peace. Uh, that would terrify me if I were to see a headless fucking ghost. Um, For real. The spirit of a headless Dutch woman is also set, said to haunt this area. She was allegedly killed by the Japanese army during the war. How right. she ended up there, I have no idea. But um, There is also an urban legend that is connected to the building. A kuntilana is said to haunt the building. And what this is, it's a vampiric manifestation of a woman who died during childbirth. And hmm. these creatures look like pale-skinned women with long black hair. Um, a, cu- a kuntilana ghost has red eyes and wears a white dress, which is smeared with blood. So it reminds me a little bit of La Llorona. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. So legend says that they are able to change themselves into beautiful humans and prey on men and helpless people. So... Ghost stories kind of multiplied, um, especially when it's the building started to really look look the part of a haunted house, mm-hmm. the dilapidation and, and all of that. Um, people who wanted to prove their courage would venture into the building in at, in darkness or even try to spend an entire night inside. Um, it's actually not surprising, as in kijawen or javanese spiritualism there is great significance in the linkage of violent deaths to specific spaces um now local ghost stories were cemented into the indonesian national uh consciousness with a film that was made in 2007 titled lewang siwu dendam kuntilana or kuntilanak's vengeance So this movie apparently tells the story of a group of young people out for a night of partying in Semarang. When they wind up inside the old building, the resident spirits become angry and seek revenge after one youth disrespectfully urinates in the building. Which, I don't blame them. That's disgusting. Right. Um, So anyway, this movie came out and apparently it just sort of like reinforced the belief and it. It's sort of kind of, sort of kind of. Sort of, kind of. It sort of kind of reinvigorated the stories. Um, <laughs> so there is a show there called Dunia Lane, which means other world. And it's a paranormal reality show. The premise is basically they get somebody to spend several hours alone in a specific part of a location. And if that person mm-hmm. can make it the entire time, they win money. Not so kind of like a fair factor for ghosts. Kind of, yeah. yeah so... Okay. On their episode of Luang Sewu, the contestant failed, but 
they did capture what they are calling a ghost while filming. So I'm going to show you this screen grab that I found online and you'll it's mm -hmm. six different frames. So it's the video and it's six different frames of the video that they've sectioned off. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get your take on it. So here okay. we go. Okay. So in it, you can see the top three pictures is the guy and mm -hmm. there's a doorway behind him and he's just kind of sitting there and there doesn't seem to be, be anything in the doorway in the first mm -hmm. three. But then if you get to the bottom three, all of a sudden there is an object that wasn't there before. Right. And in the final picture, the sixth picture, you can see it's kind of blown up. It's a, mm -hmm. but it's obviously of a, taken of a different frame. Um, it, it, it looks like a woman in a white dress with long, dark hair on either side. That's what it looks like to me. It's yeah, a little, I can see that. It's a little harder to see it in the actual door frame, but I don't know. What what do you what do you what do you think? Um, it's definitely interesting. We can't since we've never been there. We can't tell if there's like some sort of reflection. It doesn't look like the camera moves too much, so. It does, and I all of a sudden have a reflection. But, mm -hmm. I think uh, it is a stationary camera. This video mm -hmm. is on YouTube, and so you know, folks can go and watch it. And you you watch this guy, and he's blindfolded when he's led into the building. I watched a few minutes of it. I didn't watch this part, but um, yeah. So you can watch it and see this whole part of it. This scene kind of kind of play out but right. I thought it was interesting I was like yeah that wasn't there in the first frames um, no, it sure isn't. and given that it's video is a little you know it's a little interesting right it's a little interesting um, because it doesn't look like anybody walks into frame it's just all of a sudden right. there's something there mm-hmm so anyway, that's that's what I have, guys, on um, Luang Sewu. It isn't is it isn't much. It's kind of basically the same hauntings um, over and over again. The Dutch woman and the headless mm -hmm. apparitions in the basement, and um, yeah, just a lot of heavy emotions. Uh, you're hearing cries and screams and, and and things like that. I did read something interesting that it is actually open twenty four hours a day for tours and visitors and stuff. I read that too. I thought it was pretty cool. Like you can go in there in the middle of the night. Like that's right. That's yeah. Really awesome. Yeah, I thought that was really really cool. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I have. What do you think of it, Laura? What do you think of the place? I think it's the history is obviously very interesting because you go mm -hmm. from you know colonial setup to it being you know right. used in the World War Two, and then yeah. you know the skirmishes. You know when um, the Indonesians were trying to take back their their country and then Dutch came, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of different people involved that kind of fought in or around this yeah. building, mm -hmm. and um, just really interesting because um, we all know that you know the colonialists also not very nice to the local populations as well. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, except so for here in just America, a lot of negative, <laughs> negative history here you know just mm -hmm. a lot of bad shit happened in this place and you have yeah. the water right running through because yep. the big storage tanks i mean so you have the like, constant source of water yep um it is right smack in the middle of um Semenyang, so it's busy mm -hmm. it's like at a busy intersection and stuff so it's i don't know oh I mean, really okay mm -hmm. yeah so it's interesting i think um, it is it's super interesting i i dig it i'm here for it i like this one i think that yeah. i think this one was really I good the plus, beheading stuff is crazy. Ugh. It's super, super crazy. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, again, it's it's one of those things where anywhere horrific things happened, and yeah, I feel like that's going to leave like an energetic mark on a building. And right, you know, it's, it's and we just have some, like so much of it here. So much, so much, so much of it, so much of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That was Luang Sewu, guys. That was a, a quick episode. We haven't had a, an episode this quick in a while. Um, and as you We're know... We're going to make up for it next week. Don't worry. <laughs> dude. 
do. For real. Um, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be our Halloween episode, mm-hmm. and we're really excited about the um, the location that we're going to be covering. So, That's also, it has nothing to do with Michael Myers. Um, <laughs> so, to that end, let's go ahead and you know how we like to do here now. We got a new bit called Strange History. So, <laughs> um, this isn't so much history as, um, I love this book. I, so thank you, Jennifer, again, for sending it. I, I, it's filled with so much fun stuff and they have sections in it called botched history. So this is a quote, um, by former baseball player, Jose Canseco, um, (laughs) tweeting on the 100th anniversary of the Titanic disaster. Uh, oh, he nice. says the Titanic 100 years ago, wow, global warming could have saved the Titanic, <laughs> sad to say. Um, also, he strangely, it says strangely, he was kind of correct. <laughs> right? And he's not wrong. And he's not entirely wrong. But yeah, I just thought that was really, really funny. Um, I was like, all right, Jose Canseco, you, you go you. You go. Mm hmm. Um, so anyway, that was a quick little strange history. I thought, I just thought that was really funny. Oh, sound like global warming would have saved them. Um, (laughs) sometimes people are dumb. Anyway, uh, Laura, why don't you let everybody know where they can find us and follow us and stalk us? No, don't stalk us. That's not cool. No, no. Um, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And at hoahpodcast.com. And we are on the TikTok at hoahpodcast, at hoahcarry, and at hoah co host Laura. Woohoo! Laura's been Yay. dropping the big fat ball on her TikToks. Um, I suck. I'm a TikTok. I'm not a great social media person to begin with. I know, but like the two that you did, I was like, what the fuck? 700 view? What is happening? um i'm funny you're funny you are (laughs) funny um so we'll give you a break until you get moved into your new house and then um yeah i think we should everybody should start stalking laura on the tiktok and tell her that she needs to post more content because her life is very amusing and her humor is really spot on so (laughs) it's more my life is very amusing (laughs) (laughs) Um, random shit happens to me trust me (laughs) and that's why it's good that's why it's so funny i swear to god you're missing out on so much tiktok gold with those fucking kittens like you need to be (laughs) they're crazy it's so crazy they're They're so crazy they're so cute but they're super fucking crazy yeah i absolutely you're Mm -hmm. missing out on tiktok gold so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this episode laura and i are gonna go and we're gonna slip into our halloween costumes <laughs> and um we will uh see you next week with our halloween episode and if you want to pre-order a hoodie we will have that pre-order open november 1st and run it for three weeks did we or should we do so. a month like or should we do a month i think we did a month last time i think so we'll Something do it for like a month that. We'll do it from November 1st to December. Yeah, November 1st. Just order it right away. Don't procrastinate. Um, Yeah, don't be like Laura. (laughs) The cautionary tale that is Laura and her procrastination, even though I am also a big procrastinator, which is why we're best friends. So, Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, stay safe out there because you never know who or what is listening. See you next week. Bye. Thanks, guys.